So, big, like, and it's 37, well, 38, technically, one, didn't, one, didn't, one movie I didn't watch, but 38 total, uh, 37 I watched and, and read. It's mostly comics, as is the con as is norm for comic reviews. But this one, so usually I would, like, return, like, some of them, and I'd get books, but I'm not doing that this time. This is gonna be a little, after this time, I'm gonna take a little break from going to the library. I, I, I'll get more into detail in tomorrow's video, but I want to get on my personal collection. There's a one stack that I kind of put together that's like, oh, well, I'll have some time before, because already, like, even if I was going to go to the library, I was still, like, still get library books this month, or I shouldn't, I shouldn't say this month, but, no, this month, this is June, uh, this month, and, like, put them in. I want to go today, return all the books, and then put more in, and then, you know, so either way, be returning a whole bunch of books today, but, and so I had a stack there, I was like, okay, that'll, that'll hold me over until the next time I go to the library, so I had that stack, but I also have a stack I've had since late December, early January, that I was like, okay, in January, we're gonna get a little break, and then, yeah, it never ended up happening, and that, and this is, this is long overdue, so for, further ado, let's get to the last comic, uh, last library comic review video for a little while. I would say at least three weeks. First up, we have the movie I did not watch called It's Just As Kids. Um, honestly, it was one of those movies that, to begin with, I was like, oh, it's controversial, it's NC-17, we kind of interesting to watch a movie like that. And then I found out there was a scene that, you know, rhymes with tape, that I was like, you know what, if I'm not gonna watch the girl with the dragon tattoo for the same reason, let's not, let's just hold off on this one. I, I kept, like, saying to myself, like, oh, it's only an hour and a half, you know, maybe a scene is short, you know, can we skip it? Um, you know, it's like one, one of those things, I'm like, even then, like, it's just probably even too much for me, you know? So I decided to skip it. Uh, I, I, maybe I'll watch it later down the line. Maybe I'll gather the balls to watch that. But again, if I'm not going to watch Girl with Dragon Tattoo for the same reason, you know, why bother with this one? Now on to everything I did watch and read and, you know, all that shit. Um, Anatomy of a Fall, I thought was pretty good. I think it could have been... I think if it was two hours, I would have liked a lot more. Uh, I think the courtroom drama stuff is kind of, like, slow, because they, they do it in a re re really realistic and, you know, uh, re really realistic way. So it's kind of, like, sitting in the regular courtroom. It has that same feel. And I get that's what they're going for, and perfect. But everything else was, like, really good. Like, the, the character uh, the character drama, the family drama, like, that was really good. A lot of stuff happens that, like, I did not, not expect, and it was, you know, it kept me... I think, if, again, if they cut the courtroom drama stuff to... I, I don't know how they would have done it, because they kind of had to have that in the movie. But if they cut that down however they could, I think I would like a lot more. Like, again, it was two hours. I would like, I would like this a lot more. Um, but I, I still think it's worth watching. I think it deserved the Oscar one. We got this. The Lobster is bizarre, um, but it's not... I, I don't want to say it's not my thing, but... Like with Anatomy of a Fall, it could have been shorter, and uh, just I, I, I'd be I, I this movie. I'm not like super sold on Yorgos Lapimos. Jeff on the hard way, he does direct. He did direct this movie. I was ironically enough talking about poor things, and one of the I, I'm sure I uploaded it. Maybe one of the cuts I didn't upload. Um, but I had talked about poor things, and I was like, oh, I don't kind of like. I'm really looking to watch that movie because it's basically soft poor porn, and like. Keep those separate, you know? If I wanted to watch softcore porn, I'd go on the internet for free. And it was kind of like, why, it's like, keep your art house movies separate, you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's, just, it's not just that, it's just kind of like, also Mark Ruffalo's in it, and it's kind of one of those actors that I can't stand so much that I don't want to even watch anything he's in anymore. Um, but, maybe, maybe later, maybe later down the line I'll, I'll watch four things. I have it in the library too, so. Yeah, this lobster did not sell me on Gorgos too much. Contagion. This one was very interesting because of the pandemic and how many, like, connections you could make. Like, scary amounts. To the point where I was like, did they use the same time machine that the Simpsons writers do? So, very, very prophetic. Prophetic. And I think it's a... I think it's worth watching at least once. To be fair, if it wasn't for how prophetic... Prof I, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Prophetic. 
how prophetic it was. Yeah, I'm saying it weird. Prophet. Prophetic. Prophetic. I don't know. Uh, but how, but how it wasn't for how prophetic it was, I probably wouldn't um, recommend it as much. You know, if it was just like, oh, a silly movie, this will never happen, never does, to move in the reality, but never happened. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that this is like a must watch. Dead Poet Society is a classic, but I did kind of realize that, not realize, but I did kind of forget, I guess you would say, how slow the first half is. Second half makes up for it, but yeah, the first half is kind of slow. Maybe it's because I was expecting more of Robin Williams to be in, like more uh, screen time for Robin Williams, but I don't know. Captain Fantastic is, as the title would imply, a fantastic movie. It does everything right that this movie, Glass Castle, does wrong. Now, both movies are different technically, but there's so many uh, similarities you can make between the two that they're like if you like one, you'll want to watch the other. I, I do recommend watching both, but if, I would say if you can only like, pick one, pick Captain Fantastic, like by a landslide. Uh, Glass Castle, I thought was good, but it did not hold up as well as I thought it, as I did the first time. The first time I watched it, I was like, oh my god, it's really good, really underrated. And I, I gave up, people didn't like it, but I loved it. And then now the second time or third time, I was like, yeah, maybe I, I'm starting to understand finally. I, I always did, you know, I always, because I, I, I'm a reviewer too, so obviously I know that, you know, opinions and all that junk, but you know what I mean. Strange Academy, I thought was pretty decent. Uh, Nothing that I was super crazy about, and, you know, it was kind of like, it's alright, but I can understand why, why it was so beloved, because it actually, you know, entertained. Luke Cage, Everyman, is a pretty underrated book by a very underrated writer. Anthony, El Anthony Del Cole, the other book I read by him is Son of Hitler, which I think is a supremely underrated book, and underappreciated, too. I was watching, I was looking at the comments on the, as the image comes through actual comic trailers um, for their comics, which is a very nice way of advertising their upcoming stuff. So all, all you do is subscribe to their channel, and there you go. Um, and then people, like, they weren't understanding it. It's not supposed to be, like, oh, this really happened, or this could have happened, oh, it's an untold story. No, it's, it's, a historical fiction, and everyone was there. Was like, oh, it's stupid. It just never happened. It's like, yeah, obviously it never did. It's called historical fiction, you idiots. It's a comic book. Yeah, I know some comics are like historical. Like, like a good example is my friend Dahmer, which I'll be reading for the second time pretty soon here. Um, but that, like, there's a difference. You can tell there's a difference. But this one I thought was pretty damn good. Um, a little slow here and there, uh, but. All around worth a, uh, worth a read. But 20 bucks for this? I don't know if it's worth that much. I would say get it at a, at a discount. Oh, why didn't they put the two Mockingbird, book, Mockingbird books together? Uh, so I do. I did check out both volumes at the same time for Mockingbird, because I knew I'd be able to read them uh, and finish them in no time flat. Look, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but... Uh, all around, I finished it again. So this is this is a reread, and the first time I read it, I thought it was just like so, like not ridiculous, but it's kind of like, it's not as bad as people say it is. But the second time around, I was like, yeah, I'm starting to see it. Like there's a lot of like male bashing and just kind of like, you know, that kind of like content that people say that this movie does, but we doesn't actually do. It's because of comics like this. So this is just you know. I, you ignore all that. It's a pretty interesting comic. I think Chelsea Kane, politics aside, can write an engaging story that keeps your interest at the very least. That's all I ask. You know, it's not. I don't think I'd ever buy this myself to have my personal collection, but I think it's worth reading at least once. It's very, it's a very controversial book. I, I'm not saying it's like a nine out of ten. No, it's just kind of like a. It's very hard to explain, but it's it's just entertaining enough for me to like it. Like a lot of her books are. Spider Gwen this is the last volume of the series of Jason Latour's run, and again, it is sad to see the series go. I this is a reread. I've read this before, but it still was like, damn, such a damn good run. Ultimate Fantastic Four, Volume Two. 
I like this run. It, it's a pretty damn good run. It doesn't, uh... I think the best thing about this run is about this Ultimate Universe is that it can it has changes. You don't really mind the changes because you have this still. You still have the original Fantastic Four. Actually, it's good. It's still in engaging. It's yeah. It's it's an Ultimate Universe book at the end of the day, but pretty solid one. Journey into Mystery like Volume One is very very Sandman. Uh, not related, inspired, uh, and I think it does everything Sandman does right, and some of it wrong. It has some pacing issues um, at first. Once it, once it gets going, it gets going and never stops. It is so damn engaging. It's everything. I, I would say at the somewhat middle point to the end is exactly what I want from my fantasy comics. So that feels different enough. Like, I, why can't we have? Why can't we have? Why can't we have had this? Thor. I know it's more Loki, but this, these Thor movies and Loki spinoffs, rather than the ones we got. I haven't seen the Loki show, but like, I feel like the first two Thor movies started going somewhere. Yeah, they weren't, they were very, very clunky, but then Thor Ragnarok made it a joke, and then Thor Love and Fun Thunder made it a parody of itself, and then now we're here. But this is what they need to do for the Loki show. Not a Loki show, but like a Loki movie, I guess you'd say. I'm not going to because they're so like tied up in the multiverse stuff. But I mean, I mean you know, what? Loki animated series. Here, like, like, what if? I'll make it make a what if Loki series, mini series. Eh, it's, it's, it's an omnibus is worth. It's like two of two of these. It's a lot of book. I mean, maybe you can condense some stuff like the first, like the beginning. Condense that. Uh, and humans by Paul Jenkins is my second favorite in humans story book. Out of the three that I've read and all the, all the others I didn't like. The other one I remember liking was the Charles Soul run, but and humans will never, ever, ever be a comic, a, a, a characters I like, and I'm glad they're, I'm glad they're dead. Jesus, it's, I mean, they're fictional characters. They're fictional characters, I can say. I'm glad Marvel killed them off, because they never had to deal, they never have to deal with them again. But I'm not reading modern comics anyway, so I don't know why yeah, that doesn't matter, but you know what I mean. Like, there's a reason for why I should say that. There's a reason for why they were killed off. Because no one cares about the Inhumans. Very few people do, and very few people that do probably just read the Paul Jenkins and the best of the best for Inhumans. Witchblade, I thought was another Tim Seeley book. It wasn't that great. It was a little bit better than all the all the others I've read, but only slightly. I'm glad they didn't have Volume Two. It's one of those one of those times I'm like, yeah. I could have done without reading any more of that, and I will. Uh, whenever, when they get to the Rebirth era, era for the complete collections in 2029, then I'll probably, then, and then only then will I read the entire Tim Seaver run. Is that, honestly, 2029 is giving it, is giving it too much credit. Those books are coming out so damn slowly, and there's no reason for it to be that slow. They're not that old, because it's not like it's from the 1940s, it's from the 1990s, early 2000s. It should not be that hard to find them. I'm pretty sure the trades still exist. Yeah, I could just get the trades, but I don't want to do that. I, I'd rather do the way I'm doing it. And it's going to be, both Witchblade and Darkness are going to be revamped this year anyway, so even if, they, even if we were all caught up, I'd have to I'd have a new series to worry about, but still. Uh, Leela Star. I didn't like it the first time, and the second time I read this, I really enjoyed it. This, I finally understand why people like it so much, and does it did deserve it. The eyes are, I believe it won, or is up for. Very, very engaging story. A little, little, some minor pacing issues here and there, but very minor. I already want to read this again. Abbott, I thought was pretty damn slow. It's very, very clunky. Uh, but I still want to read volume two. I have to wait for a little bit longer to read one too. Grim, I thought was all right. You know, a lot of these Boone series. I, this is the reason why I like Image. I prefer Image over all the other publishers because I had such a good track record with Image. It was like, it was like underrated hit after underrated hit. And for Boone Studios, I have some, but I can probably name with one hand uh, other Boone Studios books I've read. Which I say I've read at least like 14, 15. I can name with one hand the ones I've really, really enjoyed. This one was decent enough, you know. I, I kept my interest and kind of, sort of, and it was all right. Worth checking out at your local comic shop. Um, if it's on if it's at a discount. You know, I, you know what? Actually, it's working the hardcover. There we go. The art is spectacular. 
and then in the hardcover is oversized. Uh, Giant Days Volume what are we on Four. I can't say anything else that I haven't said before about this series. It is very cute. It's very engaging. It's like a sitcom turned uh, comic in the best ways possible. Sandman Volume 7 is my second favorite volume of Sandman. And it, it continues that, uh, that trend. Not that trend. It, it continues to be my second favorite Sandman, Sandman volume of, all, of the whole entire run. Um, and ironically enough, it just comes after one of my least favorite. It, it, it used to be my least favorite. I would still say it is my least favorite, uh, Volume 6. But this this is, has everything. This and Volume 5 have everything I've liked about Sandman. If you want to know what's so damn good about Sandman, I mean, you can't kind of can't read Volume 5 to, you know, to go in order. Um, but even Volume 1 was really damn good. But this is the best, best. For me, at least. DMZ Volume 2 is... Pretty damn good. I think Brian Boyd is, because I've read more of his stuff, I think he is better at everything else he writes, like contemporary, like they got like Slice of Life and Coming of Age and historical fiction. Then he is a dystopian, but it still proves that he is an extremely underrated writer who got the short end of the stick. And I'm glad I got everything from him from Image back in April so I could, I could uh, support the man. Even if it was some third party sellers, and technically speaking, they probably already paid him, you know, it's kind of like one of those things, but I don't, I don't know how that works at that point, but one of them I got on Amazon, right, itself? No, I did not. Actually, I did. I did. I got two copies of the couriers because the printing was, the binding fell apart. And I, I, actually, ironically enough, uh, the binding fell apart on this book in almost the same exact way that the couriers did, and it was just fine reading this, actually, this is even better, uh, that the couriers did. It was exa exactly like that, how I just showed you. Uh, how the couriers did, but a little bit better than that. Like, I was a little worse. And I was fine reading it, so it's nice to know that even if the one, I guess I have to have two copies, I can copy the binding is fine. Even if the binding breaks on that one, or I just decide to read it for the first time at, with the binding broken, the binding issue, it's nice to know that I, as long as I'm careful enough, I'll have no issue with it. Like, I, ca I actually forgot that the binding was broken as I was reading it. That's how, it, that's how good it was, so to speak. Ruby Justice League, second time around is decent, but hey, it's a step up being boring. It's all right. If you really want to read that series, um, if you like, like Ruby, you'll probably like this. Like, it's just one of those things where, I don't know. But I, I do like the uh, alternate universe versions of these of the DC characters. So they, that, that, that was kind of interesting. They kind of, uh, and honestly, it's decent. You know, it's, it, Somewhat kept my interest as it went along. Got a little bit more interesting, and the, and did not, and it, I did not feel every single page of it. Admittedly, short issues. There were like twenty issues rather than like twenty five, um, but I felt the length. That cannot be said for Batman Nightmares. This is, I just I like Tom King's run of Batman. It's like with the Mockingbird. It keeps my interest throughout and is consistently interesting and engaging and that's all I ask for in a comic. Yeah, the interpretation of Batman here is very, very clunky. Not my and not my preferred version of Batman, but it's it's still I mean, at least Tom King tries here. At least he you know it, it's engaging. Black Canary was probably the surprise of, of the whole pile here. It's the reread that I was kind of dreading reading again because I did not have not liked anything Brendan Fletcher has has written except for uh, Isola and maybe Motor Crush. Ironically enough, two image titles, his two image titles, uh, and like rereading re reading his uh, Batgirl was terrible. The second time I read that, I was trying to get to the Hope Larson uh, Rebirth era. I was like, you know what? Let's read all of New Fifty Two that comes out before it comes before technically. And I couldn't. I, I just gave up. And so, I was dreading reading this again, but it was really damn good. It actually, he actually tried to not be stupid and not go to, and go to a, an audience that wasn't reading comics back then. Or was just getting into comics back then. Just, that, that back open is terrible. It's everything that the Gail Simone run isn't. Yes? Yes. Midnighter by Steve Orlando. Decent enough. It's very forgettable, but decent. Flash, Fattest Man Alive was not bad. 
I think it's much, much better than the movie that it's a prequel comic to. It's a prequel comic to the movie. Uh, and I think they just, I think Kenny Porter should have written the script, honestly, because it would have been, rather than being terrible, it would have been a decent movie. It would have been a passable movie. It's just passable. When I say decent, I mean it's good enough. It kept my interest for the most part. I wasn't super bored or annoyed with anything in this comic. I thought it was just like, good enough. Like, uh, it's worth a, a rental for free. Flash Volume 1 of... How do I say of? Uh, uh, only for you two, Brian, I guess I, was, I meant to say. I don't know. Uh, but this is so damn good. Probably, I, I haven't read enough Flash, but this might just be my favorite run of Flash. It is so damn good. Brian Bucolato and Francis Manipole and Knock It Out of the Park. And it's kind of funny to think, because this is co-written by Francis Manipole, who also does the artwork. Um... And a friend book allows the colors along the in, in here. I think that's pretty kind of that's kind of funny. Um, but I mean, let's let's think it's co-written by another author. Kind of wonder, yeah, wonder to yourself, who's responsible for how good it is? You know, like is it Brian Bucolato or is it Francis Manipal? Because usually it's like, oh, Francis came up with the story and Brian did the dialogue. If that's the case, I would say. Anyway, this is a damn good run. New Thirty Two. Future's End Volume Two, I still think is a like it's it's enjoyably bad. Like it's everything that everyone doesn't like about New Fifty Two, but I kind of do like. It's just like it's, it's almost earnest in its stupidity. I don't know. I, I just like it. I wouldn't even say it's stupid. It's just kind of like it's nothing. Like it's not, it's never going to be regarded as an underrated classic years from now. But I like it. Because it has everything. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. Batgirl by Gil Simone. As I said before, this was everything the Brendan Fletcher run was not. This is super engaging. Fletcher's was not. This actually gets the character right for the most part. Brendan's really did not. It's engaging. Fletcher's is not. This is a damn underrated run. And I don't know why it's so hated. Like, I legitimately don't. Even saying, like, oh, the, the review. No. Even that, I don't understand why they don't like that run. Gail Simone, fine, but her run on Batgirl, don't understand it. And it ended way too soon. It kind of got cut off because of the controversy that I won't get into. Uh, Pop by Kurt Pyers was pretty damn good, but not nearly as good as this other Dark Horse book that I read. It's only Teenage Wasteland. This was fantastic. It had everything I like about indie comics was in here. An engaging story, going the extra mile, and just fantastic. And definitely mature readers. Mostly for the language, but there's a, there's a bit more than that in here. But very, very, very good book. This actually, this is my pick of the week. That's how good it was. Little Nightmares is very forgettable. I honestly kind of forgot about it after I read it. I remember liking it enough, but... Forgettable. Very forgettable. Maybe because there's only two issues. Yeah, two issues in here. Um, Head Wound Sparrow by Brian Pucolato. Um, I read this before. I think I liked it a little bit more the first time around. Still damn good. Still worth checking out, but... Yeah. Wow, twenty four ninety nine. I would say full price. This is, this is a kind of it's a good deal, and you should... And if you are interested in it, buying it at full price would probably be the worst thing. Although at this point, you should be at a discount. Uh, here's me again. A nice little addition to The Walking Dead, but not wholly necessary. Wolverine Origin. Each issue of the series is just so damn good. There's no slow points. It's good. There's no slow points that when it starts out, but I mean, like, there's. Once it gets going, it gets going, it never stops. If this wasn't a reread, this would get my pick of the week. But I don't include rereads as pick of the week. You know what? For for reread pick of the week, that gets it. Which is surprising because I also read Sin City, which I consider to be my second favorite comic series of all time. I would say this is like the runner up. Like, you know what? They're both. You know what? I can, it's, my, it's my series. I can pick it. Both Wolverine Origin and Sin City get their reread pick of the week. And Teenage Wasteland gets the overall pick of the week. Again, I don't include reread as pick of the weeks, but I should just start putting it like a, in, its, in its own category. That's it. 